All right, so today I changed gears a little bit. And what I mean by that is typically you guys know that I lean towards more of a park flyer size plane, smaller kind of like 3S 2200 size batteries, like your standard stuff, like our swappable planes. You guys know I love the E-Flight Valiant. Uh, there's a lot of uh, park size planes that have become iconic over the years. And today I changed gears in the sense that we have a huge plane and that is the Flex Innovations RV8. Now, not only is this just an amazing scale looking model, uh, but the performance of this thing is unlike, well, it's actually like a 3D plane. <laughs> uh, for those of you guys that have been following for a while, you guys know that we've actually spent quite a bit of time with Kike Zamanzini. Our relationship with him and Flex Innovation goes back for years now. And for those of you guys that don't know, Kike Zamanzini is like one of the best pilots in the world, and he's also the guy that designed this plane. The interesting thing about the way Kike Zamanzini designs his planes is they are fully capable in every sense of the word. Not only are these planes uh, very scale in the way that they look and the way that they fly, but that when you crank it up a notch, they are also amazing performers, specifically in the realm of 3D. Kike has a ton of precision aerobatic and 3D aerobatic experience, and so when he designs a plane, I'm assuming that he wants one that can do everything so he can fly it nice and scale, and he can hover it and dip the tail in the water all at the same time. The plane has a wonderful presence, and we actually had it next to the cargo plane, and that was when the scale of the, the plane, not, not the scale looks, but like the sheer size of the plane really kind of sank in is because the RV, when you think of an RV8, it's a very like a uh, uh, compact, sporty little plane. And so when you see it, it may not look like the biggest plane. And even when you're seeing it on video, it might not look too big, but it is a very large plane. Specifically, it's a 76 inch wingspan and it's about 66 inches long. So it takes up a lot of space. And uh, the cool thing about larger planes is not only is there just an off factor of the size, but when you scale planes up, the air molecules stay the same size. And so basically what I mean by that is the planes just fly a lot better. Uh, you hear a lot of pro pilots say that, you know, real planes just fly better than smaller planes. And it's true, they don't get bumped around as much. You can fly in a little bit more wind. They have a little bit more uh, capability when it comes to flying in wind. And I put that to the test with this RV-8. I was a little uncomfortable. I'm not too experienced with six cell capable machines like this, nor big planes like this. I, I've flown a, you know, my fair share of them, but it's not typically what I gravitate towards. And I have to say that all of my nerves and my anxiety about flying this went out the window as soon as it took off. But before we get into the flight experience, let's go over a little bit of the general specs and features of this thing to kind of give you an idea of what you're getting with this RV-8 at that four $199 price point. Um, also, I should note before we get into it, I don't consider myself a professional pilot. I have more experience than some. I, I still am learning every single day and by no means am I a 3D pilot. I'm not a precision aerobatic pilot, but this is coming from the standpoint of just your average everyday pilot. I'm competent, I can fly with confidence, uh, but by no means am I a 3D pilot. So that being said, let's get into the features. One of the most notable things on all Flex Innovations product is their proprietary Aura 8 flight control system. So this is an onboard flight controller that has gyros and accelerometers built in, and it's going to help you compensate for like wind gusts, but also when you are flying in 3D modes, it is going to help compensate for any kind of air. It really just makes the plane feel uh, true is the best word that I can think of. I had it set up on a switch right out of the box, which we were using Spectrum uh, transmitters and it integrated very, very nice. It was, it was truly was plug and play in the sense that the receiver plugged right into the Aura 8. I used two satellites and uh, the setup was overall pretty easy. Now the Aura 8 had a three position switch and all the way forward was no gyro, low rates. It was basically just like a, a simple mode. So, and that's what I flew in first. Um, just because I never fully trusted gyro right off the bat. I flew it with no gyros and it flew fantastic. And we were flying it in a little bit of wind. Um, next on the switch is kind of like a middle of the road mode. It's still kind of lower rates, but it activates the gyros. It's gonna help you with uh, compensating for wind gusts and stuff like that. And then the final mode is kind of like a crazy mode as David Winnestall would refer to it. Um, it's extremely high rates and the throws on these control surfaces, both the ailerons and the elevator rudder and also the flaps is pretty massive uh, for RV-8 anyways. Lots of throw and it also couples that with 
high gains on your gyro. So it is basically like your 3D mode. And the cool thing about that mode, it also mixes the flaps into the ailerons. When you have your flaps all the way up, you now have full wing ailerons, which is really, really cool. And it gives it more of a 3D performance that you might be used to with like an extra or an H540 if you're flying 3D planes. The next thing that I really like about this is it's, it's canopy. It has a huge canopy that pops off and it gives you easy access into the innards. It was very easy to get my two satellites, uh, DSMX receivers in there. And also we were putting a huge six cell battery in there. It had plenty of Velcro straps. And the way that the uh, plywood tray in there was not only mounted to the motor, but it also went back and it kind of latched onto the wing spar as well. That coupled with the large canopy, it made it very, very easy to open it up and kind of service it, swap out the battery. If you needed to make any adjustments, uh, that, that was not a problem at all. So speaking of the wings, it is two piece wings and they are made of foam on the outside, but they are actually hollow and inside there is a carbon fiber and wooden structure. So this isn't just a typical molded plane. There's a lot of thought that has gone into this design. And though while you pick the plane up with one hand, it does feel very heavy. For its size, it is a remarkably light plane. I think it comes in around 10 pounds. That's with a 5200 six cell battery, but a 10 pound airplane, uh, that size is pretty, pretty lightweight and you can actually feel that as you're flying it. It has very light wing loading. Speaking of the wing innards, another thing that was in there is lights. We had the night version and there's two different versions that you can get. We'll put links to both of them down below. Um, but we got the night one and it is filled to the brim with LEDs and it even has these little spotlight LEDs shining up on the tail. It not only has the internal lights for night flying, it also has scale nav lights. And when it lights up at night, it really, really is a spectacle to see. But also it's cool because you don't have to wait for the sun to come up to fly your plane. You can keep flying all night, which is super cool. On the product listing for this thing, <laughs> they uh, allude to the fact that it's a one hour assembly time. And maybe if you're Kike Zamanzini, uh, that's probably true if you're really trying hard. Uh, but for me, it honestly took uh, every bit of four hours to put this thing together. Now granted, that was me double checking everything. I was taking my time. I probably got distracted a couple times, but realistically, it's going to take longer than an hour. That being said though, the assembly was very, very good. I would say um, there was quite Quite a bit of it, but everything, the fit and finish, the way that it all went together, the manual, it all was pretty good. Now this is advertised as a plug and play. Um, I would go as far to say that it's leaning more towards an ARF. It's somewhere in between there. Uh, the servos do come installed, but you do have to hook up the linkages on both the elevator and the rudder. Um, you even have to mount the motor. The motor comes separate. You have to mount it onto the firewall um, and run the wires through. It's not a big deal and it's really, really easy. Just make sure you use your thread locker. I was a little bit surprised by how much assembly there actually was. That being said, it does kind of make sense. It's a huge plane. Moving on to the landing gear uh, it is 6061 t6 aluminum landing gear it even has the flex innovations little logo on there it looks really really good it has some of the most elaborate wheel pants that I've experienced on there but it does hold up it does do pretty good I had a couple look we'll call them hard landings I wouldn't even go as far to say that they were crash landings but I noticed that after that the wheels were bent out a little bit but it wasn't a big deal at all because you could easily just bend that back. I would rather have it that way than the other way around being too stiff so every landing is very, very rigid. I like that it has a little bit of flex, no pun intended. And if you do hit it too hard, just keep an eye on your wheels. Make sure that you're not getting too bow-legged. And if so, you just bend it back and you're good to go. As far as the servos go, it's using Metal Gear servos all the way around. Now, again, I'm not a 3D master, but I did notice that they were very, very fast in their response time overall. I mean, I haven't had any issues with them at all. It's all being powered off of a 70 size 500 kV brushless motor. And you couple that with a 17.5 by six prop and the thing has a ton of power. Now, specifically this prop is designed by Kike himself. It's called the Samanzini Ribe. And I might be getting that wrong, but it's, it's specifically designed by Kike and it's supposed to have the most grip or the most bite at any given speed, no matter where you are in the flight envelope. And I have to say it was pretty powerful. Uh, now the power itself is a little bit different experience. If you're a guy like me and you're used to the park flyers, it has plenty of power to go vertical but it is a 
it's just different when you're flying a larger plane. The power comes on just a little bit slower. Now do keep in mind, we were flying the plane a little bit heavy. Uh, we had a larger than recommended battery in there, but even with that, it still did vertical, no problem. Josh was able to hover it. I could hover it a little bit. It more than enough power to uh, go vertical and definitely more than enough for some sport flying, precision aerobatics, touch and go, stuff like that all day long. Another unique feature of this is it is float ready and you can even get the floats with lights installed so you can light up your whole RV8 with floats and a disco ball. But it does have a cool look and it's definitely unique. It's a unique float plane compared to what you probably see a lot of the guys flying at the pond or the lake or wherever you float guys go fly. A low wing sport plane with floats is just something unusual and for that I give my hat off to Kike and the guys over at Flex. Just thinking outside the box and doing something uh, a little bit unusual usual and different just because it's cool. Another fun fact is it still does the 3D maneuvering even with these giant floats on. We'll put another link down below to Kike doing some crazy 3D aerobatics with the float plane. Lastly, the, the paint scheme is pretty cool and it's a combination of paint and stickers. The nice thing is it comes all factory applied right out of the box so you don't need to worry too much about it. Overall, I personally like the scheme. Green isn't my favorite color but it does look good in the air and it looks even better in person than probably it does on camera right now. You can tell a lot of time went into it. Now, as far as the battery is concerned, they recommend a 4200 to 6200 6S battery, and that's anywhere from 40C up to 75C. That being said, you know us, we're irresponsible. All we had at the time of filming this was an 8000 milliamp 6L. So, of course, we threw it in there, and it managed the weight no problem. I think if we had the lighter battery in there, it would be a lot easier to whip around. But that being said, I have to say, even with an 8000 milliamp battery in there, it still felt very light on the wing loading. In a little bit of wind, it was astonishing how slow this thing would go. It really, really caught me off guard. I was expecting it to be a lot faster, um, just because it feels heavy when you have it in, the, in your hand. But when you spread that weight out across the big wing of the RV-8, um, it, it flies great. And even in a little bit of wind, we were flying it at times, we were flying it in 15 mile an hour wind gusting to 20 and you barely even notice it. That being said, the overall experience with the plane assembly and flight, uh, overall I'd say it was good. Now it is big and big I don't think is necessarily for everyone. Like I said earlier, I prefer smaller planes. I prefer simplicity. I prefer something that you can throw in the back seat without having to disassemble it. Speaking of disassembly, the two removable wings do come off very, very easily. Um, two screws basically and you're good to go. And it's easy to put it back together as well. Just a couple servo connections and hook up your lights and you're good to go. So to fit it into a smaller vehicle, you are going to be doing some major disassembly, which is going to be a little bit of a pain. If you're a type of guy that has a large truck or a trailer, or even say you own your own land and you've got a barn and you got storage to store this thing assembled, I think that's where people are really gonna find a lot of value in this plane. We just moved out to our new location out here at Edgewater, so we have tons of space to not only fly it, but also store it. I'd say one of the cons to big planes is obviously storage and transportation, but the pros to having a big plane is, like I said earlier, bigger planes, just fly better. You can fly them in more wind and in the air it just feels more true. There's really not a way I can articulate it with words but bigger planes just fly better. Going back to the battery, they said that it was about a five to nine minute flight time. Now I'm assuming that's if you fly it like Kike Zamanzini, uh, doing hovers and rolling harriers and all kinds of high speed full throttle maneuvers. Yeah, I'd say that's about true. Now we, I was flying it like I do, low and slow, and we also had a huge 8,000 milliamp battery on it. And uh, the longest flight time that I got was about 16 minutes on an 8,000 milliamp 6L, and I still had about 25, 30% left on the battery. Um, so overall, that's that's pretty impressive. If you're doing some scale flying and low and flow touch and goes like me, you can get a pretty good flight time out of the thing. All that being said, overall, this thing has kind of shifted my mindset a little bit. I have a little bit more of an interest now in bigger planes. And now, now keep in mind, part of that could be is because I have the privilege of working here at Flight Test and making content for you guys. So I have a place to store it and I also have a field to fly it at. Um, if you're on the fence about a big plane, take your environment and how you're going to be storing the 
plane and also transporting the plane because I think that is probably going to be the deciding factor for most. If you can deal with the storage and the transportation, I mean, the plane speaks for itself. It is an amazing plane. And even at the $500 price point, I understand that's a ton of money, um, but this is a top of the line plane. Uh, you are getting basically the high performance characteristics of a plane that probably costs three to four times that if you were to get it in balsa or fiberglass. Overall, the Flex Innovations RV8, I think is a, is a winner, especially for those scale enthusiasts out there that also like to dabble in uh, precision aerobatics and even a little bit of 3D. This thing really does it all and that's why it's coming in at that price point of $499. Again, we'll put links below to everything we talked about in this video. Uh, we just moved out here to Edgewater to all of you guys that made it possible. Thank you so much. We had been flying this plane around and testing it for the first time and so I figured I'd take this time and share my experiences with you guys. Let us know what you think about the plane. Let us know what you think about the video down in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe if if you haven't yet, this is actually our tech channel. So we have a couple different channels going and this is where you're going to find all of our product related videos and our resource based videos. So hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And until the next video guys, we'll see you later. Thanks for watching.